Praise to the Holy Living God. Praise to the Holy Faithful. 
Stirring up deep, deep well. Stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna dance in the rain. Somebody dance in the river. Stirring up deep, deep well. Stirring up deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the river. Jump, sing it again. Stir it up, cause we're stirring up deep, deep well. Somebody this morning, won't you dance in the rain? Stir it up, deep, deep well. Stir it up, deep, deep waters. We're gonna jump in the rain. Somebody jump in the rain. Deep rise up, deep rise up. 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 
this morning. His love will never fail you. Never fail. Never give up. Your love never fail. Never give up. Never run down on me. Your love. Oh, yeah, yeah. In death and life. In life. I'm confident. I'm confident. I'm confident.
invite our pastors and our deacons to come forward. We're going to pray for those that have a need in their life this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. If you're here today, you need a healing in your body. If you're here today and you've got a, you've got a big decision to make, we want you to come on forward and have prayer here today. If you're here today and you just, you just need somebody to pray with you. Amen. These pastors and leaders are down here just to pray with you. Now, you might have been praying about something for many months, and it just haven't, hasn't come about yet. Why don't you come on down here this morning and have one of these leaders. Sometimes you just need somebody to agree with you in prayer. Come on, amen? Come on, can I hear an amen? Sometimes you just need someone to agree with you in prayer. So we're going to continue just to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I invite you to lift your hands and just, let's just worship the Lord for a few minutes. Come on, just praise him. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let your voice just rise up. Worship him today. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. That's it. Just praise him. Just tell him you love him this morning. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor your name today, Lord. You're the Lord of lords and King of kings. I honor you. Come on. Now, that's it, church. Just worship him. How many of you are not ashamed to worship the Lord? Come on, let's lift our hands and worship you. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I bless your name today and I praise you. Hallelujah. For who you are, for what you have done, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Standing in your presence. Hallelujah. 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 We honor you. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We bless your name today, Lord. We honor you. Thank you for your presence, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. Lord, we honor you. I bless you and honor praise you. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to pray Psalms 103 with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. He forgiveth all my iniquities. Come on, say that. He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. Hallelujah. Come on, I said he heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from destruction. He crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Hallelujah. He renews my, my strength. Hallelujah. Today, Lord, we thank you, God. For your strength in our life, Lord. You redeem our life from destruction. You crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. You satisfy my life with good things. So my youth is renewed. Hallelujah. Like the eagles. I want you to join hands with someone next to you and begin to pray for them. Father, Lord, we pray for one another today. I pray for that one on my right. I pray for that one on my left. Lord, I bless them. Just pray out loud, church. Hallelujah. I bless them today. I speak the favor of God over your life. May, be you, may you be blessed of the Lord. May you accomplish all that God has called you to do. May the favor of God be upon your life. I pray God's protection and blessing and favor upon you today. May be, you be healed. May be you walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray today. We thank you, Lord, for one another. And we pray for one another today. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards our city. Father, we pray for our city. We pray for Mayor Fisher today. We bless the leaders of our city. We pray the favor and strength of God upon their lives. We pray, oh God, this city shall rise up and be a righteous city. In Jesus' name, we pray for every church today, God, that the word of God shall be preached. For every pastor, God, that the power of God shall move in churches today, Lord. Lord, bring a healing to our city. Bring a healing to the lives of people that are broken and hurt, oh God, and cast down, God. In Jesus' name, we pray favor and, and the blessing of God upon our city today. Now, I want you to lift a hand to the Lord. Let's pray for our country. I pray for President Obama today. I pray for the leaders of our and our country needs a move of God. And we thank you, God, for a powerful, Lord, anointing, Lord, upon our nation, God. Lord, let our nation come back to you. Let there be a repentance, Lord, in the land. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray for our nation today, God. We sigh and cry for the sins of our land. In Jesus' name, we pray, oh God, that you'll move in a mighty way in every area of this city, Lord. Hallelujah. In this nation, in the name of the Lord. Now lay your hand on your heart. I want you to begin to pray the will of God over your own life. Lord, let your will be done in my life. Come on, just say it out loud. Let your will be done in my life. I pray your will, God, shall be done in my life. Your favor shall be upon me. Lord, I want to be right in the middle of your will. I want to be smack dab in the middle of your will, oh God. And Lord, I want to please you in all that I do. I pray this out loud. Say, dear Lord Jesus, say it loud. Dear Lord Jesus, I belong to you. And I'm here today because I'm a worshiper. And you called me to serve you. Now, Lord, anoint me. Let me be full of the Holy Spirit. Work in my life. Let me be a blessing to my family. 
to those that I work with, and to all people who are hurt. Make me a blessing, I pray, in Jesus' name. Now put your hands out in front of you. Pray this. Say, Lord, anoint my hands to do good works, to pray for the sick. Let the power of God flow through my hands. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Now give the Lord a good hand today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you love the Lord today? Come on, just lift a hand if you love today. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Our ushers are coming at this time to serve communion. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get in a rut. I heard some one preacher say the only difference between a rut and a grave, the rut has both ends knocked out. I guess you're just dead in one or the other. You know, I believe the church is like, we were singing a song about the old ship of Zion. The ship is made for the water, and she's safe as long as she's in the water, but you let the water get in the church or in the ship, it's too bad. You've got trouble. This morning, an old proverb says you take a pig, put it in a parlor. It won't change the pig, but it'll sure change the parlor. Oh, God, help me to stay clean this morning, not let the world come into my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wonderful to keep your eyes on Jesus. Peter learned that lesson when he was walking on the water. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk. When he took his eyes and looked down, he began to sink. Praise God. I'm trying to wait for the ushers to get through here. Let us pray. Father, we love you this morning. We want above all things to be in the center of your divine will. We know your will is best for us. We believe that all things work together for good to them that love you, to them that are called according to your purpose. God, make this partaking of this ordinance this morning. Make it meaningful to each one of us. Let us catch a fresh glimpse of Calvary, the blood that washes whiter than snow today as we come beneath it. Keep your hand on us, our eyes upon your soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us eat. Let us drink. Join with Dr. Bob and Margaret Rogers as they celebrate their 25th year as senior pastors at Evangel World Prayer Center at the Black and White Gala on Monday, November 4th, 2013 at the Marriott Louisville downtown. This elegant formal gala will be a luxurious evening of dining, entertainment, and featuring a silent auction to benefit the Lord's Kitchen. For more information on this event or to purchase your tickets, visit worldprayercenter.org forward slash gala. Reserve your tickets before October 1st and receive a special preferred discounted price. Watch us live online each Sunday. And for special events and conferences, visit worldprayercenter.org and click on streaming. Steve Brock will be at Evangel September 29th. For more information, visit worldprayercenter.org. Experience the miracle healing power of God in a one-day healing crusade I mean, with evangelist Billy Burke. You're about to get the upper hand. 
David said, this day has God delivered you into my hands. God's going to put your enemy in your hands. And, and then you're going to show mercy. Oh, my God, the Holy Ghost. Somebody give him praise over this place. Oh! Billy Burke will be at Evangel Sunday, October on, 13th for one day only. Praise. Don't miss these great miracle pick services. Her up, pick her up, pick her up. Jesse Duplantis at Evangel World Prayer Center for one night only. See, is a dream. If your members are bigger than your dreams, you're in trouble because you're not building a mental map on the road to divine destiny. How are some of these men jumping on their wives because they're getting a little fat? Why don't you grow some hair? Oh. oh. Thursday, October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Evangel World Prayer Conference Center, 6900 Billtown Road. For more information, visit worldprayercenter.org. A lot of exciting things happening around here, isn't it? Amen. I think we ought to give God a big praise clap for the great things that he has done and is doing and will continue to do for the glory of God. Amen. We're all a part of the great church family. We want you to know how much we appreciate you and we love you and we're so glad that you're here with us this morning. And we especially like to welcome all of our guests. If this is your first time with us or first time in a long time, may I see your hand? We'd just like to welcome you. Amen. If you keep your hand raised real high, our ushers have a gift bag. They're going to come and place in your hand. Let's give our guest a round of applause here this morning. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just keep your hand raised. We appreciate you being here. And we're so honored that you're here in the service with us this morning. We have in that gift bag several items, and, and also one of those items is a guest card, registration card. If you wouldn't mind to fill that out, and when we receive our offering in just a few moments, uh, place that in the offering. We'd appreciate that very, very much. And again, thank you for being a part of our service. If we can help you in any way, feel free to stop by at our information desk and we'll answer any questions that you might have. I want to share just a few quick announcements with you this morning. I want to let everybody know that our fall cultivate small groups are now meeting. They're going strong. And there's a brochure out at the information desk. Some of the classes that we've had from the summer have carried over into the fall, but we also have a lineup of brand new small groups that are meeting. And I know one of them is going to be a perfect fit for you. Say, buddy, say for me. That's right, a perfect fit for you. And so I want to encourage you to get activated in some of these small groups, develop some relationships, and I promise you, you're going to be glad that you did. And I know I've heard many testimonies of how these groups have just been a great blessing. So I want to encourage you to be included in that number. Also, I just want to let everybody know we have some powerful prayer meetings that are meeting every single day and i'll tell you god's really doing some great things we have monday through friday we have 6 a.m prayer meetings here at our Billtown road location as well as our miners lane and the prayer chapel and they are 6 a.m but we also have some other special prayer groups that are meeting on tuesday morning at 8 a.m at our miners lane prayer chapel we've got a great prayer service there our staff is there and it's a tremendous time. And on Wednesday morning, we have a special men's prayer meeting right here at the uh, Miners Lane campus. And that starts at 630. There's a, there's a little, uh, you know, refreshments there as well. So, and that's specially for men. So if you want to come out and be a part of that men, it's a great time. Then on Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., the uh, ladies are having a special prayer service there at the prayer chapel at Miners called The Well. And I understand that's going really strong as well. Friday night's a powerful prayer time at our Miners Lane campus, and that's in the p.m., and that would be from 6 to 8 in the evening. So it's a great time of just coming out and seeking the Lord. So I want to encourage you to press in. And then one other announcement. Uh, there will be some tables set up there in the lobby that gives some ticket opportunities for the uh, gala that's coming up there on November the, the 4th. And I want to encourage you to stop by, go ahead and take care of that. It's going to be a tremendous, extraordinary event. And I know you're not going to want to mess out on that. So at this time, let's all give the Lord a big praise clap. Our senior pastor, Dr. Bob Rogers, comes. Amen. Praise God. This past week has been really an incredible time here at the church. Uh, of course, last Sunday we had Tim's story and we began the CGA, CGIA conference. Uh, during that conference, we ordained 170 people. I think we ought to give the Lord a great big praise clap for that. Many of the people we ordained, probably 30, were out of Colombia and Argentina. Uh, there was one group that has about 5,000 
uh, in their church, and they joined the CGI. Also, we had a pastor come from uh, Lof, was it Loftia, and uh, he has 12 churches, and he was here all week and uh, became a, cro- a part of the CGI. So what we're saying is we are beginning a network of churches literally all over the world. In 1997, I began to uh, find a list of unreached people groups. And we began to give them out in church. And every week we would give out a profile of one of these unreached people groups. And we would pray for them. Every week we would pray for a different people group. One Sunday, uh, I was praying for this people group. And the Lord spoke to me to actually go there. Go to that unreached people group and pray for them there. And so we did. It was in it was the Sherpas, which uh, they are in the Himalaya mountains. There was the Serpa guides that uh, first climbed Mount Everest. And so we went there. We took a team. And we trekked up there and we prayed through these different villages. And then we had another group the next year in 1999. A group went. And it was made up of a lot of young people. And they carried with them a generator. And we, they wore these tags. It said the World Health Organization. And they went in there and, and uh, talked about health. And then they showed this Jesus film. Many had never even heard of Jesus like you never heard of Oliver Jones. They never heard of this fellow Jesus. And people were saved. They prayed for over 500 people. And out of that, there were a number of churches that uh, began. Uh, This last trip, and uh, Dr. Hoagland just got back from Nepal. When they came back, they came into a village, and they met one of the girls who had gotten saved in 1999 under that Jesus film. And she gave some property she had in that village for the establishment of a church. Today, today that church is over 200 people. I think we ought to give the Lord a big praise clap for that. And so God is doing extraordinary things. In the ordination service that happened Wednesday, there was a man that was a part of that. He was from Henderson. Uh, He was being ordained. He came here with his pastor, and actually he has been in pain for over two years. He has a pump in his back where they had removed two vertebras, and this pump releases some type of of, uh, uh, pain-killing agent. And during that ordination service, God totally healed him. I mean, he was totally healed in the name of Jesus. And he called his wife, and he began to tell her, and she began to cry, to see the goodness and the power of the Holy Spirit. How many are here in this service, and you were ordained, went through that ordination service Tuesday? Would you stand up just to get an an idea? There's a number here that uh, were in that service, back in the back and over here. I think we ought to give all of them a great big hand. God bless you. One of the things that took place was just a supernatural offering. People just started coming up, started laying money on the platform. I've been a pastor for a long time, and when that starts happening, I tell you, it's supernatural. (laughs) But it enabled us to meet all the expenses. But I felt like it was just a word for me and a word for all those being ordained that God is going to supernaturally meet you and meet your finances. God knows how to open the windows of heaven. God knows how to work things out financially that you may never dream how he does it, but God can do it in Jesus' name. And I feel that there is a real supernatural presence in this room for God to meet people financially. And I have at times uh, come to the offering and where I, I literally didn't hardly have anything to give. I'd given and I'd given and I'd given. 
But the Bible says that God will give seed to the sower. And if you are a person who gives and sows and plants, God said that he would give seed to us. He would give money to us. He would give finances to us. And it would come sometimes from unexpected sources. I remember when I first got married and we were struggling so you, you have no idea. I got paid $75 when all the money came in. When it didn't come in, I didn't get paid anything. And we were living in a, this little apartment and uh, my father-in-law came down. And I remember he slipped me $100. And I, I looked at that $100 and I, I, uh, I thought, well, I don't want to take any money from him. And I don't want to take money from, you know, people giving me money. And I'd, I'd give the money back. Well, I learned that sometimes God uses all different kind of ways to bless you. I don't do that now. I don't give that money. But there is a learning process, how you learn how God begins to meet you. I had a, a pastor, a fellow, uh, had some gambling money. He wanted gambling. He wanted it in the, in the um, lottery. And he came and brought that tithe to the church. And that pastor said, bless God, we're not going to receive this money, and gave it back. There was a farmer in his church that they grew tobacco. And they'd sold that crop, and he brought his tithe off that tobacco. He said, we're not going to receive this either, bless God. We have holy money. Well, you know, when Elijah, when they brought him food, did you know what brought him the food was a raven? Did you know a raven is an unholy bird? It's an unclean bird. Someone, one time they said, Pastor, said, I've, I've got this money, but it's gambling money. I said, oh, that's all right. I launder money every Sunday. Hallelujah. But I've learned that money is not good or bad. It's how it's used. Money can be used for good. It can be used for bad. But when you give to God, you're using that to bless the work of the Lord and to help spread the gospel. And there's a special blessing that God always gives back to you. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, we've had fabulous services. Uh, I've gotten home from anywhere from midnight to 1 o'clock. And sometimes these revivals can revive you to a rag. I mean, by the end of these revivals... You just think, Lord, I just like to sleep. And a lot of times you have some of the greatest moves of God. And then when Sunday comes, everybody's so wore out that they're, they're, they're staying in. But today when we receive, as we receive our offering, when we have our march, I have something that I want to give to those who can help us, help us to go over the top. And that... Uh, uh, it's, it's a Bible. It's the Tim LaHaye Prophecy Bible. It's, it's a beautiful Bible. It has all the scriptures on the return of Christ and questions on prophecy. And for those that can help us with a gift of $100, I want you to have one of these Bibles. Now, this is not your tithe, but this is in our Seed Faith March. And we're going to lay these up here, and uh, I encourage you, you can help us to pick up one of these. But for everyone who gives, and gives just as generously as you can uh, in that Seed Faith March, I have the book entitled Damascus and the Four Blood Moons. I was driving with my little grandson, Landon, and the moon it was a full moon. He said, Daddy, is that one of those blood moons you're talking about? And I said, well, it's one of them. But um, I want to encourage you to get this. This is one of the great soul-winning books. I never wrote it to be a soul-winning book, but it will literally scare the hell out of people, and that's what we want. Amen? I was over at uh, a golf course, and uh, this fellow who works there behind the counter, he is an uncle to some, children, some kids in our church that we have helped and I was talking to him, and I said, I want to give you one of these. I want you to read it. Well, the golf pro came. He said, what is that? 
And I, and I told him, he said, well, here, I'm going to take that book. You can read it when I get through. And so this golf pro had a degree in theology. I said, how did you become a, in the golf business, going to school and study theology? And, uh, but you know, people go all different directions in life, don't they? But what I'm, what I'm sharing is people will read this book and you have an opportunity to talk to them about the relationship with the Lord. I want us all to stand, everybody standing. Turn your attention to our screens as we make this proclamation. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty-handed, to bring in my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. The devourers rebuke for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessing. By faith, I have a better job. Promotions, raises, bonuses, and benefits. Business opportunities, sales and commission increases. Inheritances, rebates, settlements, and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalties, and scholarships, gifts, surprises, and newfound monies. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending. My bills are decreasing, and my income is increasing. I have the anointing for blessings, equipping me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met, and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God's upon me, and everything I put my hand to will prosper. I'm a cheerful giver, sowing in good ground that's bringing souls into the kingdom of God, and my God is supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, we have... Uh, we had a young man down at the City of Hope, and uh, he'd been there for four months. He was 19 years old. He was from Evansville, in Indiana. And his parents were real godly people, and he, they sent him up there. He was on drugs and alcohol. And uh, I remember just about three weeks ago, uh, I preached on the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, then he went home. Uh, went home a, a, about uh, a week ago Saturday and he was killed in a car accident. And so this week we had his funeral. And uh, at that funeral, there were 40 young people that accepted the Lord at that funeral. Isn't that fantastic? And I thought every gift, every seed that we've helped put in to make that work it was worth it. Just right on that one, one thing. Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving. Let this offering be more than enough to meet every need. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. God bless you, and God bless these ushers. We're going to pause just for a moment. I promise we'll return you to the service here in just a matter of minutes. But I want to remind you that you can call for prayer. The number is on your screen, 888-613-6080. If you're unable to call, you can send it in by email to prayer at worldprayercenter.org. We're believing God to meet you and to meet the need of your life. We serve a God who answers prayer. And he said in his word that we should call on him. We should ask that we would receive, seek that we would find, knock, and the door would be open. So there's many reminders. Make your requests known unto God is another verse in the scripture. So we're asking you to join with us in agreement according to Matthew 18, 19. And these partners will pray with you and believe God for your need to be met. So I encourage you to place that call. And let's believe God to do something great and mighty in your life today. Now, we're going to go back into the service, and we're going to believe God for something great. I want to encourage you to open your heart, get your Bible out so you can follow along with the preaching of the Word. And when prayer is, is lifted up, you join in that prayer. And again, if you need to call, give us a call, 888-613-6080. We're going to go back into the service now as it continues.
Take your Bible and hold it to the Lord, not hold your hand up. And I want us to say this together out loud. Say, this is the Word of God. And this is my Bible. The Bible you need is the Bible you'll read. And this is mine. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In the name of Jesus. I want you to turn with me as you remain standing over in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3. Amen. And I want to begin reading verses 1 through 8. And I want you to follow with me as I read these verses. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen, seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Father, anoint your word with great power in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. God bless you. This is one of the great stories in the Bible. Because this man had laid there at the entrance of the temple since he was just a little boy. It would bring him to beg for money. They probably, this man was there when Jesus came by. But yet Jesus never healed this man. But one day as Peter and John were coming to the temple at 3 o'clock, which was the time of prayer, this man, he asked for alms and Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What he had to give him was the gift of health. And God broke that curse of sickness off of us. And through the cross, through Calvary, Amen. he paid the price for us. 
that we might have the gift of health. That every curse that the devil put on us could be taken off of us in the name of Jesus. Today, the greatest thing that I know and the greatest revelation God's ever given me is simply that God's a good God and the devil is a bad devil. Amen. And what that means is when good things happen in your life, it comes from God. When bad things come your way, it's sent from the devil who's trying to destroy you. When Jesus came, Jesus was not against any color, any race, any nationality. He was not against... Uh, uh, red people, and for white people. He was for all people. There were only four things that Jesus was against. Number one, he was against sin. Because when a person has sin in their life, it's like they have cancer. And what cancer does to the body, sin does to the soul. He was against sickness because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And he was against poverty. Because this came as a result of the curse of Grandpa Adam. And he was against demon oppression and possession. Because when a person is demonized, they take upon the characteristic of, of those demons that are possessing and ruling their lives. But Jesus came and he was for us. Can I hear an amen? amen. A number of years ago when I was in Nepal, I came to a village and uh, we were told by the missionaries there that there was a Christian in this village. In that part of Nepal and those mountains, they were all Hindu. And as you would begin to go up and climb up those trails, the higher you would get into the mountains, the more there were, there were altars under their Hindu gods. And the higher you got in the mountains, the larger those idols were until they became as large as and tall as this building is. And we went into this village, and we went to this house, and I met with this family. The, the man was very ill. He was in, in bed. We prayed for him, and God healed him. I'll never forget, they went out, and they took some grass. It was called lemongrass. And they boiled it, and they made us lemon tea. But they had a little boy there, a young boy, and I began to talk to him. And he told me how he had become a Christian. Our whole family has become a Christian. But we're afraid to tell anybody because if we do, he'll kill us here in the village. We're the only people that have accepted Christ. So I asked him what his name meant. And he said, I'm named after a Hindu God. And I said, well, you need to change your name. He said, well, my brother told me I needed to change my name. And he said, but I don't know what name I, I need to change it to. I said, well, who is your favorite character in the Bible? He said, I like to read about Daniel, how he was delivered from that den of lions. I said, well, call yourself Daniel. And so when he was baptized in water, he changed his name to Daniel. Sometimes people in different parts of the world, they're under a curse. When we were born into life, we were born under a curse. You weren't born under a blessing. You were born under a curse because we were born under the authority of demons and devils and the prince of the power of the air. But when a person comes to Christ through the cross, Jesus took the curse from us. He took the curse of sin, sickness, and disease. He took it off of us and he paid the price for us in advance. We have had the payment paid for divine health in advance. Amen. There's a lot of people that don't accept that. They don't understand about the atonement of God. They don't understand that the curse has been broken. They think, well, it was just the curse of sin. Well, it was more than sin. It was the results of sin. There was no sickness in this earth until sin came in. There was no poverty in this earth until Grandpa Adam sinned, and then poverty began to come. And so Jesus paid the price, and the curse is broken off of me. It's broken off of you. We're not under the curse. We're under the blessing. Can I hear an amen? amen. My mother, she was the last of the Mohegans in her family. 
uh, I, I think it was an accident because uh, my, her mother was uh, right at 50 years old when she was born. So she was the youngest. And so the kids had grown up, the boys had gone off to school, and my mother was in high school, and her mother got crippling arthritis. It became so bad that she could not, uh, she could not cook. She could not even open her hands. So my mother had to stay uh, home from school, and she was not able to even finish her senior year. She had to go back and get her GED because she stayed and she helped her mother. Well, my mom became an accomplished organist. She played the organ in the church. She played for many ministries. She was a, a I love to hear her play the organ. But when she got the same age of her mother, that crippling arthritis came upon her. And so we were in a service, and in that service they were praying for the sick, and God healed my mother. All the pain left, her hands that were beginning to become uh, drawn in, suddenly all that went away. She could play the organ without pain, and she was healed for a matter of, of about four months, and then that came back upon her. And that evangelist, that same evangelist that had spoken, he came back through a town, and he was preaching at the church, and she talked to him. She said, you know, God healed me. God healed me when you were here before, and all that pain left, and the drawing left, but now it started to come back on me. And I'll never forget what that minister told my mother said, you know, that's not arthritis. Those are just lying symptoms. That's the devil just trying to put something back on you that Jesus has healed you. And my mother said, you know, you're right. Sometimes we know something, but the devil will blind us. And we're right in the middle of the fight, and we know it just as, as well as we know our name. But the devil blinds us, and suddenly we, we, don't, we, we don't see it. She says, well, that's exactly what's happened. This is a lying symptom. And within a week, all that went away. And my mother never had that curse on her life. I'm here to tell you, the curse has been broken through the power of Jesus Christ. Now, what Jesus did on the cross and the price he paid is called the atonement. Say that with me. It's the atonement. So when someone says, well, that was purchased in the atonement, that is a 50-cent word that means at one moment. We were separated from God. We were divided because of sin, and the wages of sin was death. And so when in the Old Testament, instead of a person having to die because of their sins, they laid hands upon an animal, and they imputed into that goat or that sheep the sins of the nation. And then that goat was, was uh, slaughtered, and that goat took the penalty or the substitute for the people's sins. Well, Jesus became the Passover lamb. He became our substitute. He took the sin upon himself. The Bible says he that knew no sin became sin for us, that we might have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus became sin so we could be delivered from sin. Can I hear an amen? amen? He took the curse upon himself, and Jesus paid for all of that in advance. And the word atonement, at one month, includes healing. Healing was paid for at the cross, not just our sins. There's a lot of people that don't believe healing is a part of the atonement. There's a lot of people that don't believe that poverty and lack, Jesus paid for that when he was crucified on the cross. But the Bible says this, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty we might be made rich. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now I believe that God wants to take the poor off of us and put the blessing on us in the name of amen. Jesus. The Bible says he that knew no sin became sin for us. It says that who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, 
that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness and by his stripes we were healed. So he took the stripes on the stripes at the cross for our healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's paid for in the name of Jesus. We used to have a, a brother who came here. His name was Harold Bredesen. Harold Bredesen was a part of the Brethren Church, and he eventually went into the Lutheran Church. And he went up into um, North Dakota. And the pastor that, uh, there, he came as an associate. He said, I'll tell you what I, I want you to do. He says, there is a, uh, a group of people who started a church, and I want you to go over there and uh, a lot of people in our church have begun to visit them. And uh, I want you to go over there and get them to come back. Said so they're over there and they're, they're speaking in that tongue-talking thing. And that uh, they're saying they're healed. And I want you to get them out of all that stuff. So Harold began to visit them. And he went to one and, and they said, oh, Brother Harold, we're so glad you came to see us. Yes, we've been going over there and God's filled us with the Holy Spirit. Oh, and, and he began to look and he says, if that tongue talking is so bad and so full of demons, why do they love Jesus more now than they did before? And so he went to a, um, a lady and uh, this lady had been miraculously healed. They had a, a, a child who had been born deaf and they'd gone over to those meetings and that child had been totally healed in the name of the Lord. And he thought to himself, he said, Lord, if that is really real, then I want you to use me to pray for someone. And so he went to visit this lady who was kind of homebound, and she had crippling arthritis. And so he, he said, well, I'm going to see if it really works. And so he quoted that scripture in 1 Peter 2.24. And by his stripes we are healed. Lord, heal this lady in Jesus' name. And then he went home and he repented. Oh, God, why did I do that? Lord, I am so sorry. I repent. I know that you don't heal. And I know this was wrong. And so he went back over to the lady's house to apologize. And when he got over there, she said, Oh, Brother Harold, ever since you prayed for me, all that arthritis has gone and has left me. And he began to see, come on, let's give the Lord a big praise God. And he began to see how God, everything that God did in the Bible back then, he was still doing today. And God filled him with the Holy Spirit. He eventually went to New York City. And he began pastoring a church. And the Holy Spirit began to lead him. And he would go on the subway. And he'd look for people and he began to pray for them. One day while he was on the subway, he saw a young man and he thought, oh God. And God began to direct him. He said, I've got a word for him. And so he went up to this young man and he introduced himself and he began to talk to him. And as he talked to him, he said, God gives me a word for you. You're going to be, God's going to raise you up. One day you're going to have television stations. You're going to preach the gospel. God's going to use you to bring healing. And it was a young man by the name of Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson, his dad was a United States senator from Virginia. And uh, he had gone to Yale. And uh, God had gotten a hold of him, called him into the ministry. And he was in uh, the School of Theology there in New York City. And he began to talk to uh, Pat Robertson. He said, God wants you to come and, and be my youth pastor. And so that's how Pat Robertson got the baptism in the Holy Spirit was through this man, Harold Bredesen. So one day he came to him and he said, uh, we're going to go see Norman Vincent Peale. Norman Vincent Peale pastored that great church in New York and had founded Guidepost Magazine. He said, we're going over there to lead them into the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, uh, Pat Robertson dressed up just, you know, like the son of a senator would. And he went over there to the house that night, and they thought they had an appointment. Pat thought that he had called ahead, and uh, they knew they were coming, but Harold hadn't. He was just led by the Holy Spirit, and he knocked on the door, and this lady came, says, we're, we're here to see Dr. Peel, and, and uh, well, I'm sorry, he's out of the country. Oh, 
well, is Miss Peel here? Yes, she's here. Well, we'd like to see her. And so they went in, and she said, well, who, exactly, who are you? And uh, they began to talk to him, and before you know it, she had received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so they, uh, they began to share with them, and, and they brought them uh, the Sherrills. John and Elizabeth Sherrill were the editors of Guidepost magazine. And they said, we, uh, they began to share with them about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And they wrote a book, and that book was entitled, uh, And They Spake With Other Tongues. How many ever read that book? That became one of the most famous books in our country. It began to tell about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and through that book, millions of of people begin to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And today, there's almost one billion believers in the world that have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak with other tongues today. I think we ought to give the Lord a, a big praise for that. Harold Bredesen was in Taiwan, and he was in the cab, and they were going, uh, uh, they had uh, left the, uh, they were going to the hotel, and the window was down, and a cab came the other way, and somebody flipped a cigarette, and that ash hit him right in the eye. Well, immediately they took him to the hospital, and it had burned his cornea. They put a patch over him. He was supposed to speak at this uh, service there at the hotel, but instead he was lying in bed in, in terrible pain. And while he was there in and the service, they, they went on with the service, and there was singing. Well, there was a, a man there. He was an American, and his name was Creed Davis. He was from the United States Immigration Department. And he was there in Taiwan, and it, he was praying about where to go to church, and he heard this singing there in the hotel. So that he went in to the service, and they said, well, our speaker, Harold Bredesen, is unable to speak and they told what happened. And the Lord spoke to him. Said, that's the reason I've sent you here, to go and pray the prayer of healing for this man. And so they, he told him what God had said. So that he, they allowed him to go up, and he prayed for Harold Bredesen, and God instantly healed him and made him whole. I think we ought to give the Lord a big <laughs> praise clap in the name of Jesus. There was a, a couple... Bob and Flossie, her name was Flossie, I'll never forget her. They had gotten laid off at their work, and um, they, you know, they were on unemployment, and they had to cut some of their expenses, and one of the things that they dropped was their insurance. And in this process, she had some type of stroke, and it affected her, and they wanted to do surgery to repair the weakened arteries in her brain. And if not, she would die. The surgery was going to cost over a quarter of a million dollars, and they didn't have a lick of insurance. What it meant was they'd lose their house, they'd lose their cars, they had a kid in college, they'd lose all that. And so in this process, a lady came to them and prophesied, Flossie, God has brought these doctors into your life. You're not to be afraid. This surgery is going to be successful. You're going to be totally healed. And God's going to take care of the bill. Well, she went in to see her doctor. And the doctor says, you know, the most amazing thing has happened. Uh, when we were discussing your surgery, uh, one of our professors who's on the medical staff at the school uh, he got so interested in this surgery, they want to film it and use it as a teaching technique at the medical school, and if you will sign off to let them do it, we'll do this free. It won't cost anything. And of course, they didn't mind that at all. Hallelujah. But it's the Lord. It's God. And it's the curse has been broken in the name of Jesus. I want you to put your hand right on your chest and say, the curse is broken off my life. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to be poor. I'm not going to be addicted. 
Every sin is broken off by life. In Jesus' name. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, nobody's perfect. We sin every day. Well, I believe that we don't have to sin every day. God's given us victory over sin. In the book of John, you read in the, in the um, epistle of John, 1 John, there are sins unto death. There are sins that, that will cause you to lose your soul. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Adultery is one of the cardinal sins in the Bible with murder and lying and stealing. The Bible talks in Galatians chapter 5. It begins to talk about all these sins and it says, and those that commit these sins shall have their part, part in the lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. There are these cardinal sins and the Bible calls them sins unto death. But there are other sins. There are sins that are not sins unto death, but are sins of the flesh. And these sins, if a person does not walk in victory over these sins of the flesh, it can lead you even unto a sin unto death. I believe it's a sin not to tithe. I believe that when God speaks to people, one of the first training grounds, the first grade for to hear God's voice is when it comes to the offering. And a lot of times God speaks to a person. I want you to give that to this individual. I want you to go give that person some money. And yet you reject it. Well, that's God trying to speak to you. That's God trying to train you. That's God trying to, to help work through your life. And if you're obedient, my goodness, God will give it back to you many, many times over. But it's a process where God begins to speak to people. I, I believe it's a sin to smoke. And yet, I have many people that I know smoke that are wonderful people, and I believe are going to go to heaven, but they may go to heaven sooner than what they had intended to go to heaven because it's a sin of the flesh that will destroy you and eventually give you cancer. And so, God wants us to be squeaky clean. God wants us to squeak when we walk in the name of Jesus, can I hear an amen? amen. I remember uh, I was invited. I was just a young pastor. I was pastoring in Lexington, and this, this fellow was, uh, was um, a very fluent businessman. And he said, Bob, I want you to go with me to my health club. So I went with him over to his health club, and there was, there was Playboy magazines and everything in that place. And I remember he... He said, oh, my goodness, look at this picture right here. I, I mean, I, I saw the Playboy magazine. I didn't want to look at it. And he said, well, you know, isn't it wonderful being a Christian? You can look at God's beauty. And uh, isn't it wonderful? You're not under all that bondage. And I thought to myself, you know, you must be a whole lot more spiritual than me because if I look at that, I, I, I feel like I'm... I, Sinning, I feel like it's, it's totally against what God says. You know, it wasn't long after that, his home broke up. He got involved in everything. And you can hear, listen to the devil. And when you listen to the devil, nothing's wrong. And you can do anything. But it opens the door for the wicked one to come in and destroy you. But God has given us victory over the enemy. Can I hear an amen? Come on, praise the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul wrote, and he's talking about communion. He said, for I've received this of the Lord. In other words, nobody taught him this. It was a revelation of the Holy Spirit. He's probably on fast. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him about the communion. He said, for I have received this of the Lord. It was a divine revelation. Take, eat, this is my body. Drink, this is my blood. And when you eat of the body and drink of the blood, he said, it brings healing. He said, because people don't discern this, they don't discern the Lord's body, many are sick and even sleep or they die because they don't understand the healing power of the communion of the body and the blood of Christ and what he did for us at the cross. One of the great stories in the Bible, the pictures of what God did at the cross is of the Passover. In Exodus chapter 12, it tells that 
the children of Israel before they left bondage. And when they left out of bondage, Egypt was the world. Egypt is sin. And now the Lord's going to bring them out of bondage. So there came the Passover, the Passover lamb. And they took a lamb, and the lamb was for your entire family. Salvation is for your family. He, he raises up, up the solitary in families and brings out those that are bound with chains. And so God saves families, and one lamb was for the whole family. And they ate of that lamb, and in Psalms chapter 105, it says this, He brought them out with silver and with gold, and there was not a feeble one amongst the tribes. When they ate of that Passover lamb, they were healed. God healed them. God healed them of arthritis. God healed them of, of disease. God healed them of diabetes. God healed them of cancer. God healed them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then when they established Israel as a nation, they, they have, these kings began to get away from God. And there came a godly king by the name of Hezekiah. And you read about it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, or chapter 30, verse 20. Here's what it says. It says that Hezekiah reinstituted the Passover. He said, we're going to honor God and we're going to do this Passover. And here's what the scripture says. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. He healed the people when it came to the Passover. Well, praise God, Jesus is our Passover. Amen. He was the Passover lamb. And when we understand that, that through the cross and what he paid for us, he paid for our healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I can lay hands on the sick and they recover, I can lay hands on me and I can recover in the name of Jesus. Praise God. In the, in the book, book of uh, Genesis chapter 14, the Bible talks about Abraham and he came to meet Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. Melchizedek probably was one of the sons of Noah. If you really go back in the genealogies, Noah's son was uh, about, could have been alive right there during the times of Abraham. But he came there and Melchizedek became a type of Christ. He was not a theophany or an appearance of Christ, but he was a type of Christ. And the Bible says he brought and he came to bless Abraham and he brought the bread and the wine. Say the bread and the wine. That's a type of the, the crucifixion. He brought the bread and the wine, a type of Calvary. And he blessed him. And then he gave him a second blessing. And he says, and you shall have power over all your enemies, which was a type of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And so Melchizedek was a type of Christ who brought the, the victory of the cross that broke the curse of sin, and then he released the Holy Spirit, which gave us that same power to break sin, disease, and poverty off of other people in the name of Jesus. Can, can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. And so the Bible goes on to say that he, Abraham, had all the wealth that he had captured from the Iraqi kings. He said, I'm not going to keep any of this. I'm not going to keep it, not even a shoelace, lest people would say, I made Abraham rich because God is going to make me rich. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. God wants to bless you. And I want to close with this. In the book of Luke, chapter 418, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. It doesn't matter if you're at Southern Baptist Seminary, Asbury Theological Seminary, Nazareth Catholic Seminary. They all come to the same conclusions. That means he's come to proclaim the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee happened every 50 years, and it was a debt cancellation. If you owed money, and uh, all that debt was canceled, 
But what would happen is people had property. Property was where the money was, and they would sell that property. Even though it was the inheritance of the family, they would sell it. And so if you sell, sold it at the beginning of that 50-year time frame, it was worth a lot more than if you sold it where there was only 10 years left into the year of Jubilee. And so they sold that property. Well, at the time of the year of Jubilee, that property all came back to the family. Well, 50 years is a long time. There are people that are born and die in that 50-year period. There are parents who would have sold that, who would have kids, and those kids would have grown up, had kids, and died, and now their grandkids are alive. All in a 50-year period, and at the end of that 50-year period, that land just didn't automatically go back to the family. It just automatically didn't return to that family. A lot of times, both sides of the families, the, the, the part that had purchased the property and the part that had sold the property, they had lost contact. They had lost records. Some of those grandchildren didn't even realize that they used to own that property. And so many times that land was lost forever. So here is a family. They remember their grandpa said they owned that land. And they had to sell it, but it was going to come back to them at the time of Jubilee. And so those grandkids, they go up to the house and they knock on the door. And Mr. Ben Hezekiah comes to the door and says, uh, we're, we're from Isaac's uh, family and we sold you this land. My grandpa did. And now the year of Jubilee has come and I've come to receive my land back. They looked at him and said, I don't know who Isaac is. This land belongs to us. Oh, no, no, no. Your grandparents bought this land from my grandparents, and really it belongs to us through the inheritance. I don't know what you're talking about. You're as crazy as a loon. Get out of here. And so they went to the courts, and the Bible talks in Luke 18 about the unjust judge. Sometimes you don't get justice in the courts. Amen. And so what they had to do, they had to contend for it. They had to contend for it. They had to go before the elders. They had to bring proof. They had to show the records. And when they did, the land was restored. Well, just because the Word of God says by His stripes you're healed doesn't mean you're automatically healed. Because the devil's right there trying to contend saying, you're crazy. Uh, the, that, the atonement, that doesn't cover healing. What are you talking about? And so we have to stand in the name of Jesus, and we have to stand on what the Word of God says to have what God has proclaimed for us to have. He paid for it. We just have to get it in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? In the book of, of um, Isaiah 43, 26, it says, Put me in remembrance. Let us decree together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Declare it. Stand in front of the devil and saying, you're a liar too. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, I curse you, I rebuke you. In Jesus' name, Father, your word declares it. In Isaiah chapter 45, 11, it says, ask me of the things concerning your sons and as the works of my hands command ye me. We have a right to stand and declare, God, you said it, and in the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass in the name of the Lord. And Isaiah 68, 19. Somebody say, I, say, Psalms, say Psalm 68, 19. Psalm say, I love, I love this scripture. It says he daily loads us with benefits. Oh, praise God, there's benefits. There's benefits in serving the Lord. Hallelujah. In Galatians 3.13, it says this. It says uh, that uh, he has taken the curse for us. He, the curse was taken from us that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles and we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. In Isaiah 53, it says, Surely, of course, Without a doubt, he hath borne our sickness and carried our diseases. And by his stripes, we are healed. In Mark eleven twenty four, 24, it says this. It says, 
Whatsoever we ask in prayer believing, we shall receive. Amen. Whatsoever things you ask in prayer believing, you shall receive. In Matthew 21, 22, it says all things. Whatsoever you ask in prayer believing, you shall receive. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, be removed to yonder place. It shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Say that with me. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Whereby I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Oh, hallelujah. In the book of John, chapter 11 and verse 41, Jesus stood there in front of the tomb of of Lazarus and he lifted his voice and he said this I thank thee that thou hearest me and I know that thou hearest me always I thank you Lord that you hear me and I know that you hear me always that's what God does for us if he did it for Jesus and hears his prayers always he hears our prayers always in the name of Jesus today you may Experience, be experiencing a part of the curse, the symptoms of the curse. But I've got good news for you. Jesus broke it off of us in the name of Jesus. And what you have is a lying vanity. What you have are demons that are trying to blind our eyes. And a lot of times it comes at us and, and he blinds us so we don't even know it's the devil. Amen. He blinds us to the point it's, it's, it's demons, demons, demons. And we're so blinded, we can't tell it's demons. But it, it's the power of evil, and it's broken in the name of Jesus Christ. God's anointed me today to pray for you. If you're under a curse, if you're going through some sickness, some poverty, some trouble in your family, stand to your feet right now. I want to pray the prayer of faith for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. Some, someone here has had a problem right here in your, in your lungs. And it's just, it's just something that's really... Uh, grip something in your lungs. You, you cannot, cannot, you, you begin to cough. And, and God's going to set you free right now in the name of Jesus. I was reading about Louisville. Louisville is one of the top five worst cities to live in when it comes to allergies in the fall. I tell you, I'm not claiming that for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to lay your hand on that part of your body if you're sick. If not, put your hand over your chest. And I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Father, I come against every devil, every attack, every demon. Devil, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. Your power's broken. Your power's broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out, you spirit of darkness. Come out, you devil, in the name of Jesus. You lying devil, take your hands off the people of God. I speak deliverance. I speak healing. I speak prosperity. I speak God's blessings. And whatever God has declared to you, may it come to pass in the name of Jesus. I prophesy your children shall be saved in the name of the Lord. I declare your children, children shall rise up and be preachers of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. I break off of you poverty and lack. May you get out of debt. May God meet you in an abundant manner. You will not have cancer. You'll not have diabetes. I command those symptoms to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in your knees, in your joints, and in your back. In Jesus' name, I speak to the organs of your body to be healed and restored in Jesus' name. By his stripes, you're healed. By his stripes, you're, you're made whole. Through the crown of thorns that Jesus wore, the curse of poverty is broken off of your life in Jesus' name. You'll be blessed coming in, and you'll be blessed going out. Now reach over and join the hand of someone next to you. I want you to begin to break the curse off of them. I want you to begin to pray blessings on them now. Father, I thank you there's an anointing for blessings. There's an anointing for miracles. There's an anointing for turnaround Things that happen in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Be set free today in Jesus' name. I call the wealth of the wicked to be released upon the just in Jesus' holy name. I speak the power of the cross to be released. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Now I want everyone to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of every sin. Lord, I want to be squeaky clean. I want to be pure in my mind and in my life and everything that I do. Devil, I'll never serve you. You can't have my family. You can't have my kids. In Jesus' name, my grandchildren will live for God. Even when I'm dead, they'll be servants of the Lord. They'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. Father, everything that the devil's told me is a lie. And in Jesus' name, I stand on your word today. Now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great big praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There were two churches about a block apart, and they were both struggling, so they decided to join together and have one church. But they had a controversy, and it was over the Lord's Prayer. The one church, they felt that they should say, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the other said, we should forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And it was just too big a barrier. They could never get over it. So they didn't join together. So in the minutes, it said one church didn't because of their sins, and the other didn't join because of their trespasses. <laughs> but hallelujah to the Lord. I'm going to go all the way. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many glad you came to church today? And it's been a great, great service. How many have gotten a healing this week? Just wave at me if you've gotten healed. Look, look over here. Look over here. Look around here how many have been healed. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. God. How many have led someone to Christ this week? Just wave at me if you've led somebody. Look over here. Oh, praise God, praise God. How many have gotten some kind of financial blessing this week? Wave at me if you've gotten some kind of financial blessing. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. Amen. Well, the Lord told me a little over a week ago that there were going to be unusual miracles that happen between then and now. So if you haven't had an unusual miracle that's happened to you, you got till 12 o'clock midnight tonight, and there's still some coming in. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We're going to go out of here with a shout. We're going to shout the name of Jesus three times. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God bless you. Amen.